Hey guys, my name is Matthew, and this is my review of Ready Player Two by Ernest Klein. Here we go. Ready Player Two is the much anticipated second novel, the sequel to Ready Player One. If you haven't read Ready Player One yet, this review is probably not for you. If you've read Ready Player One and you're wondering, is Ready Player Two worth it? This review is probably for you. No spoilers. In this review, I'll be talking about some of my observations of the novel, and I'll be listing my, those observations roughly from some of my favorite things about the novel, and then moving down through a couple things I didn't enjoy about the novel as much. At the end, I'll give my recommendation for the novel, who is it for, and who should read it. To start with, I think Ernest Cline does an amazing job of world building. In Ready Player Two, he expands upon the Oasis and all the things that you enjoyed from Ready Player One, he really does just an amazing job of building this world and then giving us some new developments in the world that actually change it in some ways that are interesting. I wondered if the Oasis was played out too much and if it was going to be just too much of the exact same thing from Ready Player One, a carbon copy of it, and it wasn't. I think he does enough unique things in this novel that it actually is pretty interesting. Though, if you really enjoyed Ready Player One, one of the other great positive things about this novel is Ready Player Two feels like Ready Player One. It, like I said, it's not a carbon copy of that novel, but something that I think is good because the first novel did get so much acclaim that it's good that we kind of stuck with some of the similar elements for Ready Player Two. It's a good novel, and I think it feels like a sequel to Ready Player One. Something I really appreciated that Ernest Cline did in this novel is he actually downplayed some of the 80s references a little bit. Obviously, they're still all over the book. The Easter eggs from the 80s, that's kind of, you know, part of it. That's part of what's going on here. But I felt like there wasn't as much... Um, gatekeeping, I guess. For someone who was born in the 90s, I feel like a lot of times I miss the 80s references, and while I enjoy them and I get a lot of them, there are obviously lots of them that I don't get. And when I don't, it feels, like I said, a bit like gatekeeping. I feel like in Ready Player Two, the emphasis came off of all of the Easter eggs from the 80s a little bit, and while they're still present, we've moved on to something different. I think one of the big strengths of Ready Player Two is actually in its plot. The plot of this novel holds, I think, more weight than the plot did in the first one. The plot of the first one felt to me a little bit like, oh yeah, there's this big trivia hunt and we just have to get this stuff. In Ready Player Two, I feel like there is a much better plot. I feel like the, the pacing of this novel is a little bit quicker than Ready Player One was, and I really enjoyed that. I also feel like the character development in Ready Player Two was pretty good. I feel like we got to know some side characters a little bit better than we did in Ready Player One, and there are obviously some lovable characters from Ready Player One who we get to learn more about as well. Another great thing about this book, although I actually read most of it and I only listened to a small section of it, is that Will Wheaton narrates the audiobook again. If you can listen to it in that format, or if you enjoy audiobooks, I definitely recommend it because he does an excellent, excellent job. A couple things I didn't enjoy about this book as much, first of all, is its slow start. I'd say probably the first 30 or so percent of the book uh, felt very kind of slow to me. Everything picks up quickly after that, actually shockingly quickly. It suddenly is all there, and I really appreciated that. But this, the kind of beginning, the world building and the details, they kind of bogged me down just a little bit. Um, so that maybe could have used a little bit of work. The other thing that bothers me just in general with books is when there's a lot of Deus Ex Machina or like... Uh, when people are suddenly coincidentally saved from perilous situations that they couldn't have got out of on their own, but someone comes in and saves them. There's a lot of that style of stuff in this book, and that was there in, in Ready Player One as well. But uh, again, it's just not my favorite thing is when that happens a lot, and I feel like it happened a bit too much in Ready Player Two in similar fashion to Ready Player One. So who is Ready Player Two for? Who do I recommend this book for? I actually recommend this book for anyone who enjoyed Ready Player One. I think it was an excellent book. He did actually maybe enjoyed Ready Player Two more than Ready Player One. And so for anyone who enjoyed Ready Player One, I think you'll enjoy this book. It's fun, it's fast paced, it's an enjoyable read, it's done in similar style to Ready Player One, but fixes some of the mistakes that maybe were made in Ready Player One. Obviously this book isn't for everyone. If you don't enjoy the campy, 
80s egg hunt references, then this book wouldn't be for you. If you didn't enjoy Ready Player One, you probably won't enjoy Ready Player Two. I think this book will scratch the itch for people who enjoyed his first book and are looking to kind of jump back into that world again. This has been my review of Ready Player Two by Ernest Klein. If you enjoyed this content, feel free to like and subscribe, and as always, stay safe out there.